This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much again for joining us on this beautiful day. As we get started, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we honor your presence in our lives. We thank you so much for each and every day. And God, we pray that you bless us with your word as we open our Bibles, inspire our hearts, God, tune our hearts to sing your praises. Lord, direct our paths and may everything that we do be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, whose gospel I now proclaim, amen. Brothers and sisters, it is just a delight to be able to bring to you the word from the Lord. It is found in the gospel of Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. And today, I reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Again, that is Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. And it reads, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. And I also want you to focus again with me on the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm and verse 23, Psalm 23, uh, excuse me, Psalm number 23. And in particular, the last verse of Psalm 23, which is uh, verse 6. So Psalm 23 and verse 6. And it reads, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Just want to talk from the title, A Resolution for Life. A Resolution for Life. Brothers and sisters, all of our lives suggest that we live according to a particular theme. I think our lives are lived on purpose and intentional. Whether you're a saint or a sinner, whether you're good or bad, if you trace your life through history, there is a resolve, there is a, there is a theme, there is a point to be made about your life. All of our lives suggest that we are living on purpose, with intentions, whether it's good or bad. When we think about the Bible, the Bible helps us to clarify our themes in life. It helps us to understand that every good and perfect gift is from above. And not just that, but God expects us to live holy and righteous and sanctified lives. When you go back throughout the pages of biblical writ, it is made absolutely clear that you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And so one of the things that I want to challenge us to do is to rethink our lives, to reignite our resolution for life. What makes you you? What makes you unique? What makes you special? What makes you stand out? And when you leave this world, what will you leave to speak on your behalf when you can no longer speak for yourself? Or who will you leave to speak when you can no longer speak for yourself? So let's take it one step at a time. 
A good resolution for life, number one, has a message. A good resolution in life has a message. Many people choose themes. Many people choose scriptures to govern their lives. I love Jesus' mission statement found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses uh, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus makes it plain that as he was leaving here, that we were to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In the Gospel of John, he says, The works that I do, greater works you shall do, because I go back to my Father. Our lives are not to be lived on accident, but with purpose and intent. But again, what message are you sending? What does your life say about God? What does your life say about your faith? What does your life say about your family? The decisions you make each and every day affect your message. But trust me, brothers and sisters, whether it's in a book or not, your life is writing a message. The second thing that I want to point out is that in order to have a resolution for life, you need a model. You need a role model. You need a mentor. You need someone, not just anyone, but someone who's been tested and tried. Someone who has had to endure. Someone who has overcome struggles, opposition, pain, and who can stand over your shoulder and point you in the way that you're supposed to go. And they have scars and they have success and they have results to prove that they know what they they're talking about. You need a model. And then finally, the message and the model should always manifest itself in a ministry. You go back and you think about the reason the church continues to bloom and blossom. It is primarily because many people who have gone on before us fought on the battlefield for the Lord and they left a legacy for us or many legacies. And so today we stand on the shoulders of many who've passed our way many who have made unique and great sacrifices to catapult us to where we are today. We are tremendously blessed. I want to go back because when you think about this particular text, Jesus makes it really, really clear in 22, verses 37. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And the first, and this is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The evidence of you being a Christian is that you walk in love. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. But think about it. What ends up being the result of this? While the Pharisees gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? And they said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies my, thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. That is because Jesus always took the high road. And when you go back and you think about the life of Jesus and the difference he made, Jesus responded to opposition with 
love, with true conviction, with an absolute commitment, and he did not waver. At the end of the day, Jesus Christ has always been Lord. He has always been able to resolve issues no matter what because he understood his mission in life. And when you understand your mission in life and when you recognize that your steps have been ordered by the Lord, when you commit your way to God, trust in him, God will always bring it to pass. I close by telling you this. When you go back and you add up your life, you go back and look through the, that narrow lens of your past. You think about all of your good days outweighing your bad days. You should resolve in your spirit, for God I live, for God I die. You should resolve in your spirit that God is first of all and he is Lord of all. You should be like David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my soul. The message is simple. Jesus Christ. The model is simple. Jesus Christ. The ministry is simple. It's all about his will. Whatever his will is, that's what I'm determined to do. So as you resolve in life who you want to be and what you want to accomplish, never put anything or anyone ahead of his God's will and God's purpose for your life. Even Jesus. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. His resolve was, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Are you at a point in your life where you can say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done? I pray that this message has blessed you today. I pray that the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart right now. And I pray with all sincerity and truth that you will yield, surrender, and simply say, take my life, Lord, and let it be consecrated unto thee. Take it, Lord. Use me in your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.